School Transportation Nation. Great to be back with you. This is Ryan Gray, Editor-in-Chief of School Transportation News, joined by my cohort, Associate Editor Taylor Hannon. Say hello, Taylor. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. Hey, yes, uh, Taylor and Tony held down the fort last week as uh, we were uh, getting our issue up uh, for February. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a, in a little bit. But first, want to remind you all that this episode is brought to you, as always, by our friends at TransFinder, the leader in school bus routing. Our clean bus tip for the day is from Nuvi, the San Diego-based clean tech company that's helping schools intelligently electrify their fleets. And a maintenance tip from Scraper Systems by Right Height, North America's leading rooftop snow removal machine for buses. And uh, lots of uh, need for that right now, Taylor. <laughs> the weather back east and down south. Uh, in fact, we had uh, one of our guests for uh, this episode had to punt Pardon the Super Bowl pun. Uh, that's coming up as well. He uh, had to, some weather dealing with down in the Houston area. So he was uh, trying to figure out what that would impact routing um, the next day. So uh, a lot of folks stay dry out there. We're, gonna, we're following up on what's going on. Uh, so stay tuned. Some of the big news that broke uh, since the last time we were with you all you might have seen that the TSD conference, we went ahead and uh, we postponed that. That was supposed to be in March. Cue the want want track uh, there. Unfortunately, uh, with the way that Omicron has been going and, and, you know, some positive news that it seems like some of the rates are dropping. But one of the big uh, uh, cases out there is that, you know, school, a lot of schools just can't travel. And we have the driver shortage. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, too. That just seems to be an ongoing topic and not going anywhere. But, uh, you know, so many folks uh, just can't travel, can't get away, and especially since we just did it in November. Uh, we were, you know, making good on some of the moves we had to make last year. So uh, November 8th through the 12th. So we moved that Back to November, uh, not not as close to Thanksgiving as it was last year, but uh, right now we're scheduled to have the rodeo back. Looking forward to doing that with our friends at Frisco ISD, and of course, you know, have uh, NHTSA, the eight-hour child passenger safety restraints on school buses training. I'm um, looking forward to that, as well as you know, we have some other things in store for you as well. Wait, Ryan, so I have to wait like a whole another year for some Texas barbecue. <laughs> Uh, almost, you know, maybe about, you know, 10 months or so, but it's going to be well worth it. Yeah, it will. It was good last time. And Taylor, she, she knows her barbecue. She picked a, a winner of a joint. So, uh, you know, come, come out with us. Maybe she'll all take you out to dinner. Speaking of conference content, uh, Indianapolis, STN Expo Indy, that's the next one up for us. So that's going to be June 3rd through the 7th. Uh, we all got some great content up online. Check that out. We just posted last week a new video from keynote Jason Hewlett. Uh, so, wow, what a, what a find that was. Uh, any of you that were able to uh, go to Reno in December, uh, he was a last-minute replacement uh, for Mark Eaton, the former NBA uh, defensive great with the Utah Jazz who tragically passed away last spring near his home in Utah. So Jason was a dear friend of his, grew up next door to him, actually. He was a young kid when Mark Eaton had moved into town, was playing with the Jazz. Um, and then they became friends, lifelong friends for for uh, Jason. And he, you know, he uh, became a speaker. Mark became a speaker and they, they bonded over that as well. So he, wow, what an entertaining guy. Um, we talked a little bit about this, you know, Taylor, when you were watching his mic check, you were looking at me like, what is going on? And I was like, Ryan. <laughs> I don't want to give away too much because, you know, it's really, um, you know, it, it's amazing. So those those who were in Reno. Yeah, I think his his video has a little surprise, too. If you watch the whole thing, one of them, he's, he's given a little bit away of what he does on stage. So, yeah. So go check that out. STNExpo.com forward slash East. Uh, registration is open right now, so you can go ahead and save two hundred dollars with uh, that super early bird deal. And you know we are uh, busy putting together all the bells and whistles that's going to go with that conference. So stay tuned. Speaking of uh, you know a big show, Taylor, you're going to a big show this weekend, <sighs> the Super Bowl here in Los Angeles. I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. Um, but I'm I'm hoping to be able to go. So. We expect a sideline report for uh, <laughs> next week's School Transportation Nation. So maybe we can, I don't know, 
who I don't know who's broadcasting the game, but you know, I'll call in some favors and yeah, if you could, that'd be nice. You know, I could meet Stafford for the Rams quarterback. So of course, Matthew Stafford you know, for the Rams yeah. here. Yeah, and you were you were saying that you know um, Cincinnati Public Schools. So Cincinnati, of course, is the other team, Cincinnati Bengals. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that um, as uh, our event manager Alice uh, Sabedra mentioned last week we were celebrating the chinese new year it was a year of the tiger and i said well does that mean you're betting for the <laughs> betting against your rams and she was like wait a second wait i didn't even think about that but um you you got some information that you've been looking at and just trying to you know yeah it's <laughs> drum up some some fanfare around that the game it it's i read that they're actually cincinnati public schools is actually canceling school on monday so i don't know is that a good idea you know are they going to be crying are they going to be celebrating you know obviously i have my opinions here being in la but respect for joe burrow okay i I'm a Bills fan, but he got his way there. He beat the Chiefs, so respect. We'll see how they play out in, for Rams versus Bengals. But, yeah, I don't know. I think I think it should be a national holiday. The day after the Super Bowl should probably – everyone takes it off anyways. So, I don't know. I'm saying it now. It should be a national holiday. <laughs> well, not everyone, but I, I agree that, yeah, there's been all- – I heard it was the most taken off day it is. of the year. Yes, yeah, it's a lot of people uh, imbibe a little bit too much, I think, uh, the, the night prior. Uh, but uh, I, I think I've been known to do that maybe a couple times <laughs> in my past, but uh, not this year. And Taylor, she'll be here bright and early um, uh, in the morning as well. Um, but that's Valentine's Day, too. So, hey, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, Valentine's. It's the, the month of love. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that the bus gets some love, too. So we're going to talk a little bit about that um, in a second. You know, another big thing that's happening right now, the weather alluded to it that, you know, it's, you know, I don't know if that that closure in Cincinnati has anything to do with the weather. <laughs> but, wow, back east and down south is getting slammed. And with the U.S., you know, so much of it under blankets of snow and ice, we're going to start off with today's maintenance tip brought to you by Scraper Systems by Right Height, North America's leading rooftop snow removal machine for buses. And certainly a lot of people can use that right now. Scraper Systems fleet plows automate the removal of rooftop snow from school buses and passenger vans, giving you a safer, more efficient method of removing snow. Eliminating the need for teams of workers to manually clear snow using roof rakes and brushes. Designed for fast, effortless, and low maintenance operation in harsh winter conditions, one person can remove, get this, Taylor, 12 inches of snow in less than 30 seconds. That's amazing. Just with a simple push of a button. With scraper systems by right height, you can reduce labor required for rooftop snow clearing while helping prevent employee injuries. Select from different fleet plow models to get the snow removal solution you need for your fleet. Contact them at www.scrapersystems.com, www.scrapersystems.com. Yeah, Ryan, I have to admit, you know, living in Wyoming for four years while going to school, the worst part of it was having to scrape the ice off my windshield in the morning before class. So the, let's just say there was a lot of missed classes, you know, in the winter time. I actually had to do that a couple of times in Tucson, Arizona, where I went to school. Oh, wow. You know, because it, it would get like we every about every five years it snows. I missed that. But in the wintertime, you, you know, January, you know, we'd wake up, it'd be like 30 degrees, sometimes in the high 20s. And then, of course, by, you know, noontime, we're at the pool, you know, but yeah, that's yeah. Beside the point. living hard, living hard yeah. over there. So, so uh, Taylor, I think uh, you have some uh, information you want to talk about uh, that we were mentioning it earlier, the driver shortage that just doesn't seem to be going away. Yeah. And I'm actually looking a little bit into this for the March issue. So stay tuned, kind of looking at salaries and those ESSER funds, you know, what are school districts spending that on? You know, have they gotten down to transportation and kind of where where does that fall? Right. Like how does transportation say this is what we need? This is what I want to spend this money on. And I was talking to one transportation director and he was able to give the whole school district. So it was the whole school district. It wasn't just transportation, but they gave all their employees a thousand dollar bonus. And that's huge coming off the holidays. He said he just got it in January. 
And that's that's something huge to be able to give your employees is, hey, thanks for sticking with us. You know, thanks for for going through this with us. Here's a thousand dollars. And so I know we've talked about it before that sometimes it is a pay thing. Sometimes being able to give that to your employees is what keeps them right. So we're definitely looking at this more for the March issue. And I'm also curious on how illnesses are playing into effect for the driver shortage, because we've talked about not having enough people to cover routes, but what about having enough people and then all of a sudden three people call out and now you're suddenly short three routes. And so I've been hearing a lot about that too. So definitely touching on that. And it's a, it's a lot going on for the March issue. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. And meanwhile, uh, we just hear the last couple of days had the entry-level driver training rule go into effect, FMCSA, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, that long-awaited rule that's been years in the making and then kind of waiting for it to fully hatch. Taylor, what, what are you uh, seeing with that? Yeah, Tony and I talked about it a little bit uh, last week too, but it's as of January, as of the beginning of January, less than half of the respondents that we had had yet to implement that. So this is like now or never, guys, like you got to implement it. It's here. It was a long time in the making. But if you have a robust training system, I've been hearing that this isn't really that you know, much or that complicated to implement if you have a robust training program already. It's also a lot more documentation, Ryan, you know, just making sure you're filling those steps out, you're checking those boxes, making sure that you're doing these things and you're registering your training providers. There's a whole training provider registry. So school districts need to go on, make sure their training providers are registered and then their locations are also registered. So a little, a couple more steps here, but Overall, it seems like if you have a robust training program, you should be good to go. And I was uh, speaking with someone at the California Department of Education, uh, Anna Borges, actually the state director um, earlier today, and I was asking her how that went. And she said, hey, they've been good to go. They got cleared you know, weeks ago, months ago by um, FMCSA because of their existing instructor program, you know, hit everything they needed to hit on and then some, it went above and beyond. So I know that's the case of a lot of places. Um, we hear some of that in the ELDT article in this February issue written by David Voles. From my standpoint, the concern that I have is that this was purposely done so that all CDL drivers could kind of be on a level playing field in terms of like basic knowledge. And whenever I see that and I, I, I see that, you know, you're training a school bus driver, but, you know, making sure that they know other modes, that just always scares me, especially in the middle of the, the driver shortage. And I know that's that's always been an issue for some folks, not all. Like as we heard from our friend Fred Dolker up at Dean Transportation in Michigan, he said he's never seen that. He's the director of safety and they heads up a lot of their their training. Um, and they've never had that that issue. So I think it comes back to culture too. It's like, you know, if you're giving folks reasons to to be running out the door, they'll take it. So, you know, it goes much beyond um, just, you know, training the, the folks and, and worrying about training them for another job. If you're hitting all the other items that you need to hit in terms of employee satisfaction. That shouldn't be an issue. So, Well, hey, Ryan, speaking of driver shortages, we got a message from TransFinder, the episode sponsor. Are you struggling with driver shortages, drivers retiring, or having to quarantine? How about the impact vaccine mandates may have on your remaining drivers? TransFinder is hearing those concerns from many in the industry. And while there is no replacement for having more drivers, it is critical that you have the tools needed to deal with emergencies that pop up. That's why the RouteFinder Plus Trips Absorption function comes in. You can reduce routes, use fewer drivers, and adapt to the changing climate. Just like NFL teams, like the LA Rams, use electronic playbooks to make changes in real time during the game, TransFinder technology helps gives you more control than ever. So when conditions on the field change, you can make strategic changes that will reduce the impact on your families. Check out Plus Trip Absorption, because this driver shortage is no game. To learn more, email getplus at transfinder.com. Type STM Podcast in the subject line or call 1-800-373-3609 to learn more. Taylor giving love to her Rams once again. <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, like I said earlier, it's February. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. 
Um, aside from the Super Bowl, Taylor, have any big Valentine's uh, plans with your fiance? Dinner, probably dinner, you know. I don't think we like to go out on weekdays. You know, we're more of like Friday, Saturday kind of people. So we'll leave the, the rest of you guys to go out Monday night. But uh, <laughs> we'll see you on the weekend. Um, well, with I, we have two kids at home. So, uh, you know, basically they're probably going to be with us <laughs> wherever we do go. But it'll probably be on the weekend. Uh, but, you know, speaking of uh, Valentine's Day, of course, Love the Bus, the American School Bus Council, We've still not seen um, them announce any national event. That's been pretty much shelved since COVID. We might still see something virtual um, happen, but certainly there are a ton of resources at uh, AmericanSchoolBusCouncil.org. Um, I think on our social media, Ruth Newton has been getting some of that stuff up there. And Taylor, you have a special invitation yes. to everyone out there. Yes. I am looking for comments, for photos. Send it my way, taylor at stnonline.com. I do want to give a shout out. I've already received one. It's from Sharp Bus Line in Niagara, Ontario. And a school bus driver made a school bus out of wood. Wow. Um, he said it took 20 hours to complete. So, I mean, this thing is so detailed. We got to get it on socials. I'll I'll send it to Ruth. We'll get this thing on socials so everyone can see it, but it is so cool. So definitely if you guys have these stories or these pictures, send them over. Love to see them. We'll get them in an article. We'll get them on socials. We'll, we'll use them. But Ryan, I believe there's also something else in the works. You're working on a California bill article. Can you give us a little flavor into that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, just saw this uh, across the desk uh, last week. It was actually introduced uh, late last month. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks um, have heard a lot of talk about uh, you know, universal preschool. That's been a big political uh, conversation for the past, oh, you know, eight, 10 years or so, even longer than that, actually. And one of the things that we don't hear too much about, though, is universal transportation. Now, certainly states are all doing different things. And there's a, you know, a lot of states uh, back east in the Midwest that have very high numbers or, or very high percentages of their students that are being transported either on the bus um, or in some other form that's, that's really uh, governed by the school district. Well, California, we like to be different. And uh, California, despite having... Um, the most students or near the most number of students uh, nationwide, they have the lowest school bus ridership. And that's something that uh, California State Senator Nancy Skinner is trying to impact. And not necessarily school buses, but her road to success is looking to do what she did uh, similarly a couple years ago with universal free lunch. So California was the first state in the union to offer universal free lunch to all students. Well, Skinner is back and she's looking for universal transportation for all students and specifically looking to to make sure that the education code is updated so that school districts and local education agencies can get funded for pre-K and nursery school transportation. Yeah, that's a thing. And certainly a lot of folks out there are are doing pre-K. Well, in California, that has never been reimbursed. Skinner's looking to change that. She's looking to create a transportation access to public schools fund that would basically allow school districts to receive the state reimbursement for preschool and nursery school, but it would also require all public and not in charter schools to offer free transportation to students, basically from transitional kindergarten all the way through the 12th grade. So that uh, that bill is in the education committee, at least as of last week. It's, it's really interesting um, looking at this. Certainly there's a price tag to this and we haven't gotten to that point. Uh, it, this is, you know, we'll, we'll certainly if it, it continues to progress, we'll see some uh, fiscal analysis uh, tied to this. But it's Senate Bill 878. And really what uh, Skinner has said she's trying to target is student absenteeism um, and, you know, graduation rates. Citing studies that show, and we've had, uh, you know, experts talk about this at our conferences, the impact that transportation plays on students and looking at, you know, as early as kindergarten, if students have that access to the school bus, um, to transportation, you know, how that can really um, set the stage for their academic career. 
Uh, so that's what she's trying to do. Uh, I, I, you know, in, in looking at it and talking to a few folks so far, it seems like it needs a little work. Um, on its uh, language, uh, it's relying heavily on transit. And so just kind of in reading it, uh, you might infer that uh, by, you know, imploring or really requiring school districts to work closely with transit agencies as well as other stakeholders in developing these plans, there is federal laws that uh, prohibit transit agencies from setting up specific routes that basically only service students. Um, so there's there's a lot there to unpack and to, to kind of figure out. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, she's uh, looking to eliminate 17 million vehicles on the road and reduce 20 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions as the state transitions to zero emissions vehicles. And, you know, it's important to note it's not just school buses. This is school transportation. So certainly there's transportation network companies and alternative transportation providers that are licking their lips at this. Um, so definitely we're going to be looking at um, how this progresses and, you know, looking to have an article up very soon. So speaking of electrifying fleets, let's turn to Nuvi, the San Diego-based clean tech company helping schools intelligently electrify their fleets for today's clean bus tip. Nuvi offers complete turnkey solutions to help schools confidently electrify their fleets. They provide expert guidance through every step of the process, from selecting the electric buses and recommending the best charging solutions based on the district's routes, to grant riding support and flexible financing options. With Nuvi, you'll enjoy the world's most intelligent charging, simple tools for transportation directors and drivers, and the opportunity to bring cleaner rides to students and communities each and every day. To get started, visit nuvi.com. That's N U V V E.com forward slash S T N. Well, I want to thank our sponsors again, Nuvi, for that uh, great information on our clean bus tip, as well as our lead sponsor, TransFinder, and new maintenance tip sponsor, Scraper Systems. Visit stnonline.com for coverage on all topics relevant to the school bus industry. Learn all about our upcoming conferences at stnexpo.com. And don't forget to register for STN Expo Indy 2022. That's going to be held June 3rd through the 7th. Visit stnexpo.com forward slash east. And don't forget, Nation, to tell all your friends about this podcast. They can find it at stnpodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Thanks again, Nation. Until next time. Be safe.